Hello and welcome to another bioaerial locomotion class video. This is part two on powered flight in birds. Part one explained how thrust is generated on a propeller blade. Part two uses this knowledge to explain how a bird generates thrust. Drag is the cost of generating lift. To generate lift, the wing must move through the air and therefore drag is uh, inevitably produced. And the purpose of flapping is to overcome this drag by producing thrust. But unlike a propeller, the bird's wing generates both lift and thrust. So in that case, it's more similar to a helicopter rotor, generating both lift and thrust. How is a bird's wing similar to a helicopter rotor, and how is it different? Well, it's different first because the helicopter generates continuous rotation. Rotation is not a movement that is available in nature to be produced by muscles. So instead, birds produce reciprocal motion. That's what possible, what's possible to do with muscles. But in one way they're similar. Helicopters incline to fly forward by tilting their nose and uh, tilting their rotor forward whereas birds tilt the stroke plane of their flapping motion. In the case of the hummingbird, it, in the hummingbird it's very clear. They um, will flap their wings in a horizontal stroke to hover, and they will incline that stroke plane to move forward. But the same is true of other birds as well. So to understand flapping motion, consider this picture, where we see that the flapping, the, the, the tips of the wing in the flapping stroke will uh, trace either an inclined ellipse or a figure eight in the air. So we can differentiate in this stroke two phases, the downstroke, shown here in red, and the upstroke. Now there's very complex strokes available in nature for some insects. Um, birds will exhibit the ones we've just shown, the inclined ellipse or the uh, figure eight, but some insects will have very complicated patterns with loops and so on, like shown in this picture from uh, the book by Alexander. Now if we look at the motion of the tips of the wings, but now not in a reference frame fixed with the bird, but one in which we see the bird fly by, then the tips of the wings will trace more or less an, a wavy pattern in the air, shown here in another picture from the book by Alexander. So let's explain those two phases of the flapping motion. The downstroke first. In the downstroke, this is the most important for generating most of the aerodynamic forces in the bird. We'll explain it in the following way. We combine the flight direction of the bird moving forward here from left to right in the picture with the instantaneous velocity downwards of the wing here shown in the midpoint of the downstroke. So the, like in the case of the propeller, the airfoil is moving downward, the bird is moving forward. So with respect to the wing we have two airflows. An airflow moving towards the bird and the wing, and an airflow moving upwards. These two airflows add up to um, some direction inclined as shown in this arrow here. This is the relative wind with respect to the wing. So now consider that on this section of the wing, lift is a force that is generated always perpendicular to the flow direction. So lift is here drawn perpendicular to the flow direction. Drag is the force on this airfoil parallel to the flow direction. The resultant aerodynamics force therefore is the vector sum of these two vectors, lift and drag, and in this picture it would be an inclined vector somewhat like that 
this is the resultant aerodynamic force, it will be inclined forward and upwards. Now if I look at this resultant force again, inclined forward and upward in our picture, I can decompose it again, but now in two forces, one horizontal and one vertical, such that the horizontal component is the thrust. This is the, for the force that overcomes drag. on the bird. The vertical component, here just labeled with a U letter, is the force that overcomes the weight of the bird. The actual lift, useful lift on the bird. The aerodynamic lift on the airfoil is always perpendicular to the relative wind on that airfoil but the total lift opposing weight for the bird is this vertical force labeled with U. So in summary, we have the force of lift always perpendicular to the airflow with respect to the wing the force of drag parallel to the airflow on the wing, we call it the relative wind. We have, I'm going to change to green to match the previous picture, a resultant aerodynamic force which is drawn here uh, tilted forward and upwards and this one produces thrust. The resultant we can decompose again into a vertical and horizontal component. The vertical component opposes the weight of the bird. and the horizontal component opposes drag. Another interesting thing is that the tip of the wing generates most of the thrust. Now if you look at the near-body section here marked with the letter X, this near-body section X this is X right here, so this, this body section corresponds to this figure. In the near body section, we have a, a very low flapping speed, similar to the case of the propeller. In the propeller, we had tangential velocity, of course, increasing with radius, and so the tangential velocity due to the rotation of the propeller is quite low near the hub, in the case of the bird. The flapping velocity, the flapping speed, is quite low near the body. And so in this vector diagram over here, we have the forward speed, the relative wind due to the forward speed of the bird, and the flapping speed of the wind, generating this purple inclined relative wind on the wing, and lift perpendicular to the relative wind, drag parallel to the relative wind, and a resultant, which in this case is actually tilted backwards. So it's generating negative thrust. In fact, there are sections near the body that are gener generating negative thrust. But the aerodynamic lift is tilted much closer to the vertical, and it helps oppose the weight. Now on this section, this section called Y, here's a section called Y, closer to the wing tip, we have a much larger flapping speed, the same as in the tip of the propeller. 
So the vector of the relative wind is inclined, more inclined, um, as shown in the purple vector. Lift is more, the aerodynamic lift on the wing is more inclined forward. Here's the drag parallel to the relative wind. And we have a resultant aerodynamic force, which is now inclined forward, producing most of the thrust. So that's the case in birds. Most of the thrust is generated at the tip of the wing, and the base of the wing generates more lift. So that was the downstroke. The upstroke is actually a recovery stroke in which the bird do, does several things. One thing it can do during fast flight in particular is to reduce the angle of attack, like shown in this figure where the angle of attack is positive in the downstroke to generate a resultant force inclined forward, and the angle of attack is zero in the upstroke, so the resultant force has a smaller magnitude, it's tilted backwards, generating negative thrust, but the aerodynamic force is much less. Other things that they can, that birds can do in the upstroke is, um, another thing is feathering the tip of the wing, so that again, we are generating less aerodynamic force in total, and the wing can recover to the top position to start a new downstroke with the minimum loss, with the minimum negative thrust and drag. Here is another beautiful picture of a bird feathering the tips of the wing like a Venetian blind to let the air through and reduce the efficiency of the wing on the upstroke so that uh, aerodynamic forces are reduced. Here's another beautiful picture of a bird in slow, in slow uh, flight speed where in addition we see that uh, the bird is flexing the wings. Wing flexion together with feathering or change in angle of attack are used by different birds at different flight speeds. Usually in slow flight, typical of pigeons, you'll see a much more uh, marked flexing during the upstroke. So in summary, the downstroke generates most of the useful forces, the thrust and most of the lift. In the upstroke, we have some complicated and diverse variations with a combination of reducing the angle of attack, flexing the wings, or flaring the tip feathers.